okay uh bruce we are starting shiva you are ready right yes okay okay thanks once again all for attend uh, for coming and joining into our another session today where we are sharing some insights to our quick acceleration as usual with me i have shiva we both work at intel and we try to make use of tpdk and help others with uh, dpdk applications okay so a small context a uh, couple of months back we were tasked with, uh, to with a activity to find out what should a next generation firewall have in terms of processing one such thing that popped up is quick now when we went and started investigating and try to probe around quick what we found out was quick in terms of functionality is very similar to tcp but with certain differences that is the connection id the acknowledgments the reordering mechanism along with the payload is encrypted it runs on top of udp payload and unlike tcp session terminations and all it is completely happening in the user space and moreover it is using and embedding the latest tls 1.3 apart from that there is multi streaming congestion management in the user space itself connection multiplexing and all which are some of the other additional features too we went ahead and we tried to also look up in open source what are the native implementations what is readily available to get started uh, we came across ms quick uh, we have fastly quickly chrome quickly and all and we picked up uh, the fastly quickly for our current uh, uh, findings that so that is what uh, we started with we took fastly quickly quickly and we started exploring with it so with these we what we want to capture and share today is what we found in it what we understood by migrating it completely the transport layer from the udp termination in kernel to dpdk user space couple of interesting observation per core scaling what can be done better in the library what all mistakes you sh one should avoid what we committed while uh, doing the send all so over to you shiva please introduce us to what we found sure sure Rick. so before before that let's uh, take a quick look into the uh, the quick packet processing both the ingress and egress so basically the, um, you, you can see it like you know three different processing stages one is the transport part the quick connection identification part and then the quick frame processing part which includes mostly the crypto part and then the stream identification so the transport part you, uh, uh, to start with when we started with uh, uh, quickly like we we were using uh, like we the quickly is currently using the tcp ip udp sockets for the transport and then the quickly library and the, the and, and the quick processing is completely done in the user space and we similarly in the key in the egress side uh, the applications are running in the user space what are the payloads or streams sent they will be segmented and then uh, they will be streamed and then the the encrypted before actually sent to the transport uh, transport layer through the sockets so for, to be to be transmitted to be transmitted out so with that basic understanding we started to get the reference numbers with what we get with a quickly library and for that we we started a simple test scenario with the two vms uh, which are configured with the best known methods and uh, the configurations so on one vm we are actually running the client application on top of the uh, on top of the udp socket and making use of the quickly library and the second vm we are actually running the server application so this server application is actually doing a just an echo of what the client does sense so we have two uh, two different vms running the server and the client loops wherein the client tries to establish the connection and the once the connection is established the client will send uh, data to the server and the server will just whatever the client sends the server will just echo it back to the client and we try to mimic a, a number of such client instances to see like you now how the server performance is scaling with more number of connections so and with that uh, shiva what you so shiva what you are trying to share us is you took the best non configuration for the vms across server and client you did a complete link pass through so that you are not bottlenecked anywhere and you were using the default kernel stack with R, S, the gso tso all the rss all the things enabled without yes. touching any of these things is that correct yes that's, that's right yeah okay 
Okay, go on. So with that, what we meant, we see that the performance is actually scaling, uh, but uh, but not linearly with more number of connections. And uh, uh, beyond three connections, uh, or beyond two connections in case of the frame sizes, uh, 12, 1280 bytes, we see that beyond two connections, it is not scaling anymore. Looking, analyzing that, we see that the performance is bottlenecked due to the data copy between a user and kernel space and vice versa. And also the transport uh, lookup overhead, as well as the locking issues in the kernel, and then the, the uh, slightly due to the crypto processing as well. This is kind of expected uh, considering the fact that we are relying on uh, TCPIP for the transport layer, which makes us to think that, uh, okay, so this is a potential candidate which can be accelerated with the DPDK. So what we did is we just uh, replaced the, the transport part on the server side. We just uh, added a simple uh, L3, L4 termination application on, on top of DPDK. And um, and uh, leaving the client and the server applications as it is like before. And with that, what we measured is the performance is actually scaling with more number of connections. Uh, and then like per, per connection performance also slightly improved as what we can see from uh, with what we get with the, the base performance like pointed with the TCP IP stack. Uh, per, per connection performance is a, Plus the performance is also scaling linearly, but uh, beyond three connections, we don't see it is scale. It's scaling anymore. So this is actually limited by one server cannot be able to handle more than three connections. And when we did the performance analysis, we see that it's actually limited due to the the, the way the the Quickly library is doing the memory management, and also due to the data copy between the application and the library. And similarly, like between DPDK backend to the library. And also, like there is also crypto uh, is also one of the bottleneck. But primarily, like you know, we see that the library is actually not uh, uh, not doing the memory management as efficient as we would have liked. So Shiva, uh, what are the red numbers alongside with the throughput number? What is that? In the throughput, so the red part, numbers are what you have we get numbers. with. Uh, Base number are uh, the base numbers that we get. Yeah, the base numbers what we got with uh, the uh, native quick kernel library. stack, and this is what we get with yeah. So uh, this is what we get with uh, after uh, replacing the transport layer with uh, DPDK. Okay, okay. So more uh, so it is more linear in nature than just by replacing the transport layer. Okay, it scales. Uh, so uh, what next but, we did? Uh, yeah, yeah. As I said, like. Uh, per core performance on the server side is not scaling beyond three connections so with that like with okay so this is what we could get with a per core per core like 2.8 gbs max and with that okay we, okay we try to increase the number of cores on the server side and see like you know how the performance scales with more number of cores for that we just added a distributed logic okay, so this distributed logic is is works based on the the quick connection id so that is uh, like every new connection it just Round robins to the next available server, and uh, that way, like uh, let's assume if you have three server instances running, like three different new connections will be distributed, uh, like one after the other through to the different server instances. Okay. And with that, what we measured is uh, the performance is actually scaling linearly, which is uh, kind of expected considering the fact that uh, there is no resource contention among those workers. But is the three workers and, still uh, the bottleneck then on per core? Three, uh, okay, so with three workers, we got three 7.8 GBPS we measured. And uh, like, you know, we, what we have observed is uh, it scales with number okay, of cores. Okay, so it's so, uh, uh, hypothetically, we, we have, so each yeah. core roughly around 2.6 to 2.8, you can get with more number of worker, with more number of new connection, you can scale to. Yeah, okay, exactly. So yeah. uh, if I summarize uh, in the next slide, if I try to summarize what we have seen so far as, Juke is running completely in user space, which is very good. So it is uh, just like was what we suspected. It's a prime candidate to have a very simple DPDK IP reassembly UDP layer to terminate those connections. That is perfect. Uh, the server application that we utilize with the echoing of the replay of the packets and all scales up to three or four connections on that core. But beyond that, it is finding it difficult to scale. So we needed multiple cores to handle it. Now, uh, uh, since 
the QCLIS draft and standard talks about uh, being independent of IP and UDP. We have to strictly rely on the connection IDs and we can use a connection ID to segregate between multiple connections and all. The main hotspots, even after shifting in and trying a couple of optimization using NUMA CTL and trying the malloc to be pinned from the 1 GB huge page in the VMs and all, we still find the QCLI libraries are not performing because of the internal lock contention. And uh, there are certain multiple copies from QCLI socket to QCLI buffer, QCLI buffer to the crypto buffer of PTLS or OpenSSL and all, which can be further optimized. Maybe these are different for different stacks, for, but for the current stack, that is the uh, that is the current behavior that you saw. Also, you you did not talk about any crypto offloading and all. So, have you tried any crypto offload, Shiva? Um, okay, so we have not done the crypto offload yet, but um, based on the uh, white paper that uh, I think based on the studies uh, which uh, VPP has performed. Um, so they see like you know with uh, with uh, with bulk crypto so the performance is scaling up to 3.8 3.5 gbps uh, compared to what we what we got with uh, uh, with one core like 2.8 gbps so okay. that is something yeah so that uh, that is something uh, like you know which we'll be exploring going forward yeah okay so uh, what are the unseen challenges then so as, as quick standard is not defined yet. So the current IETF draft, which is a 29, is going to be obsoleted soon. So like, you know, so which poses a challenge, like, you know, can quick be completely offloaded to the uh, smart NIC or you know, accelerators? Uh, that is one thing. Second thing is uh, the current IETF draft says that uh, the connection ID identifier can be an optional parameter, which since our distributor logic is actually purely based on connection identifier, how do we have to rely on the transport context to to identify connections? The, so that is something that uh, that is actually uh, kind of not clear yet. Second thing is, uh, so how can we actually just uh, uh, integrate the replace the PyCore TLS OpenSSL calls, uh, which the Quick library is is calling? Uh, how can we replace with the DPDK crypto API? So that is something which is uh, which is kind of uh, um, not clear or posing a challenge to the to do that. Okay, so what? Wh why did we talk about these findings? Here is our problem. Uh, in a typical, uh, in, in a typical uh, uh, next generation firewall, just like what we said in the starting, you get to see not just the TCP UDP connections, but you can you may you may also get to see quick like connections, wherein which multiple connections or multiple devices can open multiple streams which are multiplexed and push to the same so source destination IP and so same source UDP destination port and all, which comes as a big fat pipe to the end user. Now. There can be good packets, they can be bad packets, they can be malicious and trustworthy and all these things in it. So if you want to apply an IPS or if you want to do an IDS kind of activity here, you have to literally terminate and get each content out of each context. So with our with that mindset, when we went and explored a couple of open source stacks that is available, especially the fastly, quickly and all, these were the certain findings that we found. So uh, just to summarize, what we understood is that instead of burning up, uh, instead of having this as a simple workload again on a C CPU, maybe it is good enough to offload it to a programmable NIC or a NPU to get it done. Shiva? Yes. So with that, uh, uh, just to um, summarize, so the these are the functional blocks which we whatever the functional blocks that we have identified. So so all those function some of the blocks can be accelerated, can be offloaded for better performance, um, and also like you know the entire quick processing is one is one option is to just offload it completely to the smart mix. So so any any connection IDs. If you can create a flow table in the NPU or your programmable NICs, if we can have a lookup table, any new connection ID, we can employ a round robin or a load balancing kind of scenario and spread it to the multiple worker cores that you have on the uh, PCI card or the smart NIC and thereby 
that proxy would be terminating and giving the clear text to the end user, where the end user would be supplying it to the IDS, IPS, or even the end server application, which can run with multiple Docker VMs and scale parallelly according to the workload and scenario too. Uh, so uh, we have to give credit also for a couple of people here who helped us to get started with and helped us in collecting numbers too. Uh, with this, uh, we would like uh, we would. These are the certain findings what we came across with things. Uh, Shiva, there are there were a couple of questions in the chat window uh, shared by shared uh, shared from uh, shared across uh, and all. Uh, one is from St Stephen who uh, who was inquiring uh, if you get a RSS fragmented UDP packet, what do you do, uh, and how is it possible? that uh, that uh, you get the relevant packet for processing and all so uh, we had uh, replied back saying that uh, in our current testing what we started with is with one rx queue and there is a dedicated core to do the rx check for the ip if it is fr uh, fragmented do the reassembly logic by making use of the ip reassembly example from dpdk and checking whether it is udp or not once we identify it as a relevant UP, UDP payload, we go in and do that extra check of identifying the, whether it is a new connection ID or not, and then distributing it to the server worker course and all. The, uh, and thus, we were not relying on the RSS. And that is where we were telling that you need to have a DDP or you need to have a programmable NIC where you need to look at beyond that uh, metadata for a non-fragmented keys. And for a fragmented keys, you have to check for the first uh, packet while other things can be stitched back to form the relevant packet. We had couple of we had a couple of queries from uh, Honappa who was inquiring, uh, does the standard or the draft today support for null crypto? Uh, the answer, uh, what I shared is, as per draft 29, which is getting expired in December 2020, uh, it does not, you need TLS to be handshaked. But uh, if OpenSSL or PyCo TLS uh, supports null crypto, we can, which it does, we can go and add a context called as null crypto and we can add it to. That is also something we were exploring. But for our current next generation firewall, we have mainly benchmarked with crypto enabled there. Uh, then. Uh, yeah, uh, that is done. Uh, any more questions? Any more queries?